Risk Management Professional Exam Preparation Course Monitor and Control Risks In this video, we will explain the monitor and control risk process. The video is divided into the following topics. Purpose and Objective Critical Success Factors Tools and Techniques and Documenting the Result And tools and techniques like for the other processes is one of the key exam topic so that's why we have the yellow marker here so those who's taking the exam please study extra in this section so let's first look at where we are on the risk management process landscape so we are now in the last process of the six monitor and control risks and here we are looking at status and trends reporting trends in risk exposure so let's first look at the summary of the purpose and objective of the monitor and control risk. So the objective is controlling and monitor identified risks. It is to monitor residual risks. It is to identify new risks. And it is to evaluate effectiveness of the risk management process. The critical success factors for this for the monitoring and control risk process are three. First, integrate risk monitoring and control with project monitoring and control. Continuous monitor risk trigger conditions. Maintain risk awareness. So let's look at the success factors one by one. So first, integrate risk monitoring and control with project monitoring and control. So the project management plan must include the action required to monitor and control project risks. The project management plan should be set up early in the project planning cycle and should include the initial risk responses after the identified risk process. The project schedule should be updated after the planned risk planning. So this is the last two bullets here is really in the early stages. As you get through your planned risk response, this becomes obsolete. So after you plan risk response, you update the project management plan with all the risks that actually has been identified, analyzed, as well as responses to the risks. And from there, you go into the monitoring and control. Remember in the last process, there was a group of, of tools and there was transfer into monitoring and control. And this is what we are doing now. We have got it transferred in from the plan risk response and now we are controlling and monitoring the risk executions. Well, let's go back to the critical <clears throat> success factors. Continuous monitor risk trigger conditions. So here output from the risk response planning process is a set of actions to be executed. And the triggers for the response actions to be closely monitored as well as risk owners is responsible for execution of the risk response actions. It is not the project manager. It is not whoever is assigned to monitoring and controlling of risk. It is the risk owner. But the monitor and control risk process is overseeing that the risk owners is actually taking the action they need to do. Lastly, maintain risk awareness. So here we are looking at risk management progress should be reported on a regular status and risk status should be included into every project meeting agenda. So regular status to be reported on the risk management progress and risk status should be included into every project meeting. Now the project sponsors and key senior stakeholders will require regular reportings perhaps outside the project meetings. And if they don't, there's something wrong because high level management and key stakeholders is required to be involved to keep them focused on risk management. If they don't have any interest, they don't require any reports. This is an item that needs to be addressed because without their support, the risk, uh, the monitor and control risk process will not be effective. So that was the three key success factors. Now let's look at the tools and techniques as per the PMI model. So this area is, this process is one of the hardest ones to memorize because you see there is a number of 
inputs, tools, and techniques and outputs across the board. It's not just one output or one input. Um, and it is exam relevant as the yellow indicator shows. So here you really need to put an effort into memorizing these input, outputs, and tools and techniques. So let's go through them here one by one to give you a better understanding. So inputs, we have four inputs, risk register, project management plan, not, and I say not risk management plan, work performance information, and performance reports. So the risk register, we know by now was the main output from the risk identified process and is the key input to the monitor and control risk process as this is the risk repository for all subsequent risk processes. Now in addition to the risk register we saw in the plan risk response we also had a watch list and the watch list um, needs to be established for low priority risk so it is the risk register plus watch list in my view is more accurate but in PMI they say the risk risk register is the input so you might want to take a note of this for the exam preparation project management plan so the project management plan which also should integrate with the risk management plan is important input to allow the monitor and control risk process so the risk management plan is the output from the plan risk management and the project management plan is the output from the project management. Both is required as this is the structure for which you apply the monitoring control process to. Work performance information. So work performance information relates to results must include but not limited to deliverable status, schedule progress and cost incurred. So this is all performance measurements which make up the work performance information that you need in order to determine your monitor and control process. Performance reports. So performance reports take information from performance measurement and analyze it to provide project work performance information including variance analysis, earned value data and forecasting data. So earned value data is only if you are applying the earned value method on your project. If not, you will not have the earned value data available. So this is also project performance matrices which will tell you where you are in terms of your project performance. How is your project progressing? And the progress is important as some risk might be contingent of certain effects so certain deliverables is done or certain phases. So you need to know how far are you in the progress of your project to reach the, the different triggers that you might have added. So that's the input. Now let's look at the tools and techniques for monitoring and control risks. So we have a number of tools and techniques. Six in total. First is risk reassessment, risk audit, Variance and trend analysis, technical performance measurement, reserve analysis, status meetings. So let's look at them one by one. Risk reassessment. So during the risk monitoring and control process, new risk can be identified why continuous risk reassessment is a must to be regular scheduled. Again, remember this is an iterative process. It's not a one process when you're talking about risk management. Risk audits is there to examine and document the effectiveness of the risk responses in dealing with the identified project risks. So the project manager is responsible for ensuring that risk audits are scheduled in appropriate frequency. And risk audit schedule should be documented in the risk management plan as well as the project management plan. Variance and trend analysis. So multiple control processes use variance and trend analysis to compare planned results with actual results. And deviation from the baseline is indication of possible impact of threats or opportunities. Technical performance measurement. So technical performance measurement compares the technical actual deliverables and achievements 
to the planned technical achievements. So any deviation from planned technical achievements might indicate that you have technical risks in the project. Reserve analysis. Reserve analysis compares the amount of contingency reserves remaining to the amount of risk remaining at any given time in the project in order to determine if the remaining reserve is adequate. So if as you go through the project life cycle, risk is, is created, risks are closed, risks are changed in probability and impact, and it's important that you compare that risk picture with what you have in your reserve, your contingency reserves. So if the risk goes down, you can also lower your contingency reserves accordingly. Vice versa, if the risk is coming up, you need to escalate, report to the stakeholders, request for additional contingency reserves to be allocated. Status meetings. So project risk management must be on the agenda of every periodic status meeting. Now the format and frequency of the status meeting to be documented in the project management plan and also in the project risk management plan. So that was the tools and techniques for the monitor and control risks. Now let's look at the output. So again we have a list of outputs, five in total. So first one risk register updates, organizational process asset updates, change requests, project management plan updates, and project document updates. So let's have a look at the first one risk register update. So just as the other processes during the monitoring and control process, the risk register should be continuous updated with outcome of risk reassessment, outcome of risk audits, outcome of periodic risk reviews, actual outcomes of the project's risk and risk responses. Not the planned, normally the risk has the planned outcome, but as you go in and you execute your risk response, you should actually record the actual. Organizational process assets updates. So the output from the project risk management process could in produce information and assets that could be captured in the organizational process assets for future use. It could be templates for the risk management plan, probability and impact matrix, risk breakdown structures, lessons learned from the project risk management activities, and many others. So as the organizational process assets is an important input to the whole risk management process, you should also contribute to this and make sure that you harvest the relevant assets in your project and update the organizational process as a repository. And the process to do this is the monitoring and control risk process. Change requests. So implementing contingency plans or other risk responses might result in change requests. And change request types in relation to risk responses are the most common, recommended corrective actions and recommended preventive actions. So be aware that the output of an effective risk management process where you are taking action, reducing risk, mitigating risk, removing risk, whatever the strategy you are taking for each risk will as per good governance require a project change request to be raised. Project management plan update. So the following key elements are to be updated in the project management plan. Schedule management plan cost management plan, quality management plan, procurement management plan, human resource management plan, work breakdown structure, schedule baseline, cost performance baseline. So this is all updates that's coming out from the risk management process as you're monitoring and controlling the process and which should go back and be updated in the product management plan, the integrated product management plan, as well as necessary in the risk management plan. So that's why this is a yellow um, indicator here that this could be a question for the exam. Project document updates, the final one. So project documents that should be upgraded as needed, not limited to, is assumption log updates, technical document updates. So whatever documents you have relevant lessons learned and information to should be harvested and updated. So before we close the the chapter and the headline here, we want to give you just a tool and technique summary 
of the monitoring control risk. So we try to summarize what the monitoring control risk really is the key element. So it's managing contingency reserves. It is for tracker, tracking trigger conditions, tracking overall risk, and tracking compliance. This is really the four cornerstones of the monitoring control risk process. And this is really what we expect from the project, from the process to deliver. With that said, let's go into the documenting the result of the monitoring and control risk. So the goal is to ensure that all important risk management information is recorded to provide lessons learned for future projects. That's our main goal. And what we need to do to achieve this is we need to make sure that we lock risk occurrence and impact. We document effectiveness of avoidance or exploration action. So the risk responses that we have, we have decided we need to lock how effective they were, especially avoidance and exploration actions. Same as for transfer and sharing actions. If we buy insurance or we share an opportunity sharing, we need to record how effective was that. We also need to document unexpected or undocumented risk which occurred and data about them. So as we have gone through our risk identification, if something happened, a risk this was raised without or outside the process, we should document that, uh, especially the unexpected one. Also effectiveness of risk mitigation and enhancement actions, not just the sharing or avoidance, but all the mitigation actions and enhancements should be recorded. Occurrence of accepted threats or opportunities. Again, this is linked to stakeholders' risk attitude and risk tolerance. We should document the occurrence of accepted threats and opportunities. With that, we finish this lesson. So let's do a summary. So after completing this video, you should have a good understanding of the monitor and control risk process.